Heresy. Sounds bad, probably is. We've all heard the words heresy, heretic, heretical. We've probably heard it slightly too often used in media, in films. But what is a heresy? What is a heretic? We're going to take a quick look at the definitions. We're going to take a quick look at a few heresies from history and just generally remind ourselves not to go about committing heresy. So hopefully what I'm able to do here is to tackle your perception of the word heresy as a big scary thing that people are going to kill each other over. The word heresy, what a heresy is, is fundamentally a lie about God. We want to be in a close relationship with God, we don't want lies about him. He is a personal friend. So the treatment of heresy and heretics through history in different parts of Christianity is a different topic to what a heresy actually is. The first real use of the word heresy in regards to Christianity comes in the second century by Irenaeus of Lyon. Now Irenaeus trained in his Christianity under Polycarp. Polycarp trained under John the Evangelist. Irenaeus is a third generation Christian. This is how quickly after Christ it became very apparent that there is true Christianity and there are wrong ways to look at Christianity. Ideas are important and because Christianity is fundamentally a relationship with Christ, it is important that we know who Christ is and that that knowledge is true and accurate. And fundamentally, that's what a heresy is not. A heresy is not accurate knowledge of God. A heresy is misunderstanding God, misunderstanding his character, his identity, who is God, who is Christ. And if we are trying to have a relationship with someone, we need to know in real terms who they are, what they teach, what they believe. The meaning of the word heresy is important to understand. The word heresy comes from a word that literally means choice. A heresy is a choice to follow a belief system outside that of the established church. There is an idea that's been put forward by films and television perhaps that every time a new idea cropped up in the early church that Christianity would consider it a heresy and kick people out. That's not how the ancient Christian world functioned. The early church didn't go around kicking people out for heresy. When a heresy came up, they would discuss ways of establishing the truth. The church would collect its members into councils and they would decide how do we best establish what the truth is. This is a problem. What do we actually believe? How do we state it clearly so that people don't go about believing that within the church? Then it would be an effort to implore those who are believing the heresy to accept the established teaching of the church and what the church collectively had always believed. If they didn't want to do that, they would tend to leave on their own and leave the church. These fringe groups didn't tend to last very long. Division tends to cause more division. And eventually they would argue with themselves about what was true doctrine and split apart into smaller and smaller groups, eventually dissipating and fading away. The heresy itself would likely make a comeback at some point down the road because heresies aren't fundamentally that complicated. Humans aren't very good at working out heresies, and so the same heresies will come up in different points in history in slightly different flavors. An important distinction is to be made between the word heretic and the word heterodox. They sound kind of similar, and sometimes you might hear those same words being used for the same general group of people. But the words don't quite mean the same thing. Even though a heterodox person and a heretic might both believe a heresy, there is a sort of grace given to a heterodox person that isn't given to a heretic. A heretic has chosen a wrong belief and is going with it. A heterodox person is someone who, maybe with the best of intentions, honestly believes something to be right. They've been taught that, it's just the way they've grown up or the way they function. They might not have been exposed to truth. And this is an important thing calling back to when I did the talk about the early church fathers and who they were. The reason why we have the fathers as a collective and no individual is because any one individual person might have a heterodox idea, something that is slightly off key, something that is slightly wrong. As long as it's not flat out massive heresy, we can understand that that person might be well-meaning and have a bit of grace for them. So to be heterodox is to be incorrect but it might not necessarily be that person's fault. To be a heretic, you've really chosen something and you're going with it. It is of course better to be neither of these things and to be following true doctrine and the true church. In Christian history, the church has dealt with a number of interesting heresies. We're just going to drop in a few examples. The first one I'll mention is Arianism. We've already mentioned it on this channel and we probably will again because it is a pernicious little heresy that comes up time and again and we have a number of very famous heroes that dealt with it in the past. Put simply what the heresy states is that Jesus is not God. 
Jesus hasn't always existed. Jesus is a created being that did some good stuff, but he isn't God. Now that is pulling at the very heart of Christianity. The whole religion changes if you believe that heresy. It was eventually officially condemned when over 300 bishops from across the Christian world gathered together and wrote out what Christianity believed, and it was not Arianism. Another massive one was Nestorianism, named after Nestor, the person who came up with it. The problem with making up a heresy is you tend to get associated with it for the rest of human history. Nestorianism, put simply, says that Jesus is split. He isn't fully God and fully man. He is sort of God inhabiting the same space as a normal human being. If you think that's weird, it's because it is. It doesn't really make sense, but that was the idea of Nestorianism. It was a massively popular heresy and a really big problem. Eventually, the church got together to fully condemn this heresy and to come up with some new language to be used in worship and in services and in Christian texts to prevent this heresy from ever coming up again. Some of this language centered around Mary, and we will look into that again in an episode very soon. That we had to understand who Mary was, to whom did she give birth, who was Jesus. This was an important fundamental understanding of the character of Jesus Christ. Who are we worshipping? We'll talk more about those words within Christianity very, very soon. But what fundamentally Christianity believes is that Jesus was fully God, fully man, indivisible, all one. An interesting one from the second century was one called Montanism, named after Montanus, who first started it. This was quite strange and highly bizarre. Montanus actually claimed to be the living embodiment of the Holy Spirit. Their version of Christianity was characterized by some very strange concepts of how the Holy Spirit worked. They had highly ecstatic expressions of worship, where they felt that the Holy Spirit took control of them and made them say things and talk and speak through them and control them. They also were said to be baptizing people in the name of Jesus and not in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which was the established teaching of the church from the first century. All of these things combined made a very strange religion. The church quickly stepped on this one and said, this is wrong. The Holy Spirit does not take away your free will. He does not control you. He doesn't use you like a puppet on a string that God works with you, we have a choice to follow Christ. He's never going to take away that choice from us. Montanism largely disappeared at the end of the second century, though it did crop up in other places down the road. Another big heresy that came up that we're going to deal with more in a few future episodes very soon is iconoclasm. This lasted for years. Iconoclasm has to do with our understanding of imagery. Because God made man in his image, and then God became man and took on that image, it follows that our understanding of what imagery is, is essential to get right. Iconoclasm would say that all imagery was evil, and this sometimes spilled into our understanding of the image of man, of the human body, being evil itself, and it was a long time before the church was able to fully state and articulate what imagery meant, and how do we work with imagery. Later pop-ups of this heresy in the West, for example, often led to a disdain and a ban on culture, music, art, and self-expression itself, as well as a general disdain and disgust for the human body, despite the fact that Jesus Christ was God and had a human body himself. And so very soon we'll be talking about what imagery actually meant to the early church, what it means to Christians today. And those are just four different heresies. There are more. But as you can see, they tend to touch on who is Christ and how does God work. Our religion is built up on a relationship with Christ, and it's important to have that relationship be built on truth. And we need to realize that Christianity isn't just some list of banned ideas and approved ideas, it is a relationship. And for the early Christians, it was important to get that relationship right, to be able to keep building that relationship. And I am very grateful for those in the early church that fought heresies and fought to preserve the truth of understanding of who God was, of who Jesus is, and what it means to be Christian. And I'm glad that even though heresy is somewhat repetitive and small and kind of comes back, that God is infinite and unchanging. And that we, like these members of the early church that fought for the truth, we can too know the truth and be in that relationship with God. And that's it. Thank you for watching yet another episode. The tea that I'm drinking today is black tea with coconut, turmeric and vanilla. And it's fairly strange.